Greetings. It's actually been a while since I did a review of an inexpensive Chinese pen, so here it is. This is a Duke Model 552, and this is a very interesting pen. It's got a lot of different uh, stylistic features going on, a lot of different materials. So we'll walk through all those and um, see uh, how we all like it. So this is a pretty hefty pen, weighs 45 grams. There's a lot of metal here, some wood, some plastic. There's pretty much every material you could think of here. Um, so 45 gram pen, decently sized pen. As you can see, it's a bit bigger than a Lame Safari or a Pilot Metropolitan. So we call this definitely a large pen and a girthy one as well. The body of this pen is made out of bamboo. It's a sort of a solid piece of bamboo. I believe what they do is they take a stick of bamboo and drill it out and hollow it out in the center and essentially stick the guts of the pen uh, in through that. Um, so this is real, real wood, real bamboo, uh, sort of polished and finished. It's actually quite smooth and it actually feels quite, quite good in the hand. I really like sort of the overall feel of, uh, of this material. Um, it's got this interesting end effect, sort of this two, um, it's got two pieces of chrome here and sort of a step down here. This is uh, to accommodate posting. The pen, um, the, the um, the uh, clip is uh, sort of a nicely shaped clip, it has the word Duke embossed on it. It is a very, very, very stiff clip. I mean, this just, you can't even, practically can't even bend it with my fingers. It's a very, very stiff clip. Um, has a cap band that has the words Duke and 552 on it. The top of the cap is really interesting. It has like a, a two bands of chrome to create like a target effect and then what looks like a synthetic pearl um, uh, stuck in the top. There's a lot of different material here and we're not even done yet. So like I said, we have a black metal enamel on the cap. We unscrew it. It takes three quarters of a turn to unscrew. It's a very quick unscrewing pen, which is a really nice feature. And like we said, because it has this kind of nice step down here thing, it posts and posts quite solidly. Uh, it's a bit top heavy. Um, so you may want to consider using this unposted, but you can certainly use it use it posted, no problem at all. Um, the section is really kind of odd. It's kind of a strange section. It's got like a double step down going on here. Has this little chrome ring here, big step down here, and a bunch of threads. The threads are very, very smooth, so they're not obtrusive at all. I mean, this step down is not insignificant, so if step downs bother you you may have a problem there. It does have this nice little lip here, but the section is very small for a pen this size. It's quite a tiny section. Speaking of section, the material of the section seems to be this black acrylic with sort of gray uh, or pearlized acrylic sort of um, inclusions set in to the uh, section. I'm going to guess that this was leftover material from a pen body and then they decided to just make sections out of it because it's kind of odd and doesn't really stylistically go with the rest of the pen um, to, um, to have the sections made like that. It's got a tiny nib, a, a nib that I would definitely classify as undersized for a pen this size. For a pen this size, you need a size six nib at least. I mean, this is a big, big pen. So the, the nib almost looks comically small in this pen. Um, it's a, a nice looking nib though. It's got the Duke, well, it says Duke. It's got the little Duke crown logo and some sort of sunlight rays coming out of it. It's not labeled, but it's in the, somewhere in the fine to extra fine range as we'll see in the writing sample. And as you could probably guess, the filling mechanism on this pen is cartridge converter. Um, lots and lots of metal parts and things going on here, so there's clearly no eye drop ring this guy. Um, that is about it for the pen itself. Like I said, there's, I mean, almost every material under the sun going on in terms of construction here and stylistic wise. Look, so either, either this stylistically works for you or it doesn't. So I, I'm, you know, I think aesthetically it's okay from my perspective. I think my biggest gripe on it is I think the nib and the section are both very undersized for, for this size pen. Um, uh, but uh, stylistically, I don't, I don't mind it really uh, at all. But it, again, it's not to everybody's taste. But um, uh, if you like it, there you go. It's an inexpensive pen. This is like one of those, you know, uh, $10 and less Chinese pens. So it's a, it's a, it's a fairly inexpensive pen. Um, let's see how it writes. We're going to find that out right now. Okay, what we are writing with here is a Duke. 
552 and this is a uh, steel nib that's uh, somewhere in the fine to extra fine um, uh, vicinity um, and it, it flows really well I, I like the flow on this it's a very smooth nib it's definitely smooth and writes well um, I, I say it all the time but it really holds true for these inexpensive Chinese pens what I did with this pen and what I do with all of them uh, that you can do this on is pull the nib and feed, wash it in some soapy water, rinse it off, dry it off, put it back in before you even ink it up for the first time. You'll just save yourself a lot of, uh, of headaches uh, if, you, if, you do, uh, if you do that. Um, so, like I said, writes pretty well. It's definitely a stiff nib, so we're not really going to get really any flex here. Um, but um, I wouldn't expect it to. But it's a smooth writing fine nib that flows really really well um it works that's about what i could say um i like i said it would be great to have a bigger nib in here this just i just find this nib just almost silly in in how small it is relative to the rest of the pen i find this section comfortable i don't I'm not particularly picky about how big my sections are or things like step downs and things like that this extra little step down here i could see some people being incredibly annoyed with this like i i don't know why they would even do that it doesn't seem to serve a purpose uh, oh i'm just thinking maybe that's where the inner cap seals against that ridge that might be the case in in any case that's shouldn't be designed that way that's not a good design and i would think a lot of people would be bothered by that again doesn't bother me very much but i could see it being a problem for some people um well what else is there to say not much more um that's about it for the pen let's talk about the ink now okay i don't do too many ink unboxings but this one definitely warrants it so this ink is part of a um, limited edition set this is the from colorverse which is a korean ink company uh, this is a limited edition voyager one commemorative uh, set it comes with four different inks which we'll see in a minute this ink that we're using today is the golden record which is one of the four i did get a fifth bottle with this um, that i reviewed uh, a couple of months ago an ink called kepler's laws so you can look for the video on that that came as a separate bottle on the side as a bonus for buying this this is not cheap it's fifty dollars for this set of four 15 milliliter bottles of ink so this is actually pretty expensive so this is sort of a limited edition it's a numbered limited edition which we'll see in a second so here's sort of the unboxing of this so it does come in this very nice box uh, it has the pictures of the ink bottles on the side um, has this nice graphic on the top here it uh, um, uh, illustrates which colors you're getting it says Voyager 1 on this side and some information about Colorverse made in Korea website etc so if we open it up this is a, a by the way this is a clear plastic seal here so just the only cut I actually made was just to slit that open there um, so it does give you a couple of interesting warnings. Do not use for purposes other than writing. Uh, ink dries quickly. Always cap after use. Do not eat. Keep out of reach of children. Uh, removing the ink from textile is difficult, um, etc. So they're basically um, caveating away uh, any responsibility. It's got some interesting little graphics here as well. You open up the flap and you get a bunch of other stuff in here besides the ink. So let's go through that. You get this little envelope that says Voyager 1 launched on September the 5th, 1977 with some Colorverse artwork here. You open up the envelope and you get a couple of sheets of paper, which are interesting. I guess if you want, I, I guess you could use this as a gift card, presumably, if you're, if you're gifting it. I'm guessing what that's for. And then you get your limited edition card. So this is a limited edition. This was number set number 134 out of 1977. And again, it says here, Voyager 1 launch 5th September 1977. So presumably this envelope would be used, I guess, for a gift card if you were gifting it. You then get this uh, little plastic envelope, which I have not opened yet, as you can see, but it contains a bunch of stickers and what looks to be a napkin. So I'm guessing that's for wiping off your nib or, or what have you. You then get this little booklet. Uh, has a couple of... Um, uh, has a quote from Stephen Hawking here 
it says talks about how this is a limited edition and then it goes into some detail on each of the inks which a couple of things which i find really interesting and you don't see this very often with other inks as a matter of fact i don't think i've seen this anywhere so it gives you uh, for this particular for example for the particular ink we're looking at today it gives you the rgb values for the color of the ink something with it i'm assuming this is pantone misspelled this is the pant uh, pantan i guess is pantone misspelled or maybe they deliberately misspelled it because pantone is copyrighted i believe even the number ink system itself was copyrighted so um but in any case the pantone number and the surface tension and the ph of the ink um so as you can see uh this is slightly alkaline this is uh, even more alkaline, slightly alkaline, and uh, uh, more alkaline uh, still. So these are all um, pHs above 7, which means they are uh, alkaline inks. This little diagram here is reminiscent of a diagram that was actually placed on a plaque on Voyager 7. So it basically shows in highly stylized terms the path, I'm sorry, Voyager 1, the, the path of the probes. So here's the sun. And here represents the Earth and the path of the spacecraft. This was for anybody who found it uh, in, in future civilizations uh, in space. And then it uh, talks about some details of the Voyager 1 mission. And then it talks about Colorverse Inc., uh, some poetic uh, uh, prose about how great Colorverse Inc. is, and etc. And then we get to the actual bottles themselves. They're cradled with this little paper um, protector. Um, and then they each sit in their own little spot here. And each of these bottles is pretty cool. I mean, the shape, it's sort of like this teardrop shaped bottle. It's pretty neat. And this is the one we used today, which was the golden record. Um, these are cute little bottles, tiny openings though. So, um, you know, you may have an issue with a big fat pen, but um, do not have an issue with these. But these are, this is, this is cute. So, so far, this is the second Colorverse ink I reviewed. The first one I did was the extra bottle Kepler's Laws that uh, I got as a bonus for purchasing this. Um, so, hopefully in subsequent episodes, we'll cover all the other ones in addition to the uh, Golden Record, which was the one we did today. So, that is probably more than you wanted to know about uh, Colorverse Golden Record ink, uh, and at least in terms of how it's packaged. Uh, in terms of the ink itself and what I think of it, so let's talk about that for just a couple minutes. So this is actually a pretty nice ink. So there is a, um, let me just zoom in a tiny bit more here. So there's a fair amount of shading. It's sort of a golden brown that shades. Um, but it's more of a burnt, or it's got sort of a burnt orangey effect, but that sort of dries away almost. So, um, you know, this, this ink going on wet and going on and, and drying, actually, I, I do feel it changes quite a bit. So it's definitely more of a burnt orange initially. And then it sort of, let's just say, mellows and matures to more of a, um, a, a more of a golden, golden brown color. But it does shade quite a bit. I mean, you can see the shading going on, going on there. So um, this is actually a nice shading golden brown ink. It is kind of expensive, but it's kind of cool. So on the other hand, um, I guess you get what you pay for. Um, there's all sorts of warnings and caveats about these inks. They are quite uh, alkaline, etc. I would not use these inks in an expensive pen, or certainly anything with a with a rubber sack or anything like that. So I think this inexpensive Chinese pen is a good choice for my expensive Korean ink. So I guess that's about it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe. If you did not, please leave a comment and tell me why. In any case, have a very good day. Bye-bye.